Let's say hello to Doug. Doug, hello. How are you, Mr. Grant? What's on your mind besides how I am? <laughs> What's on my mind? Uh, stupid. I'd call a guy and say, how are you? I'd call, call a guy on the radio just to say, how are you? <laughs> hey, $500 million in settlements and fees to sex abuse victims and their families. Now, I attribute all of that to celibacy, and I'll tell you why. Because in my opinion... It, this, this celibacy thing uh, is, 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 is unnatural. So, so in a lot of ways, it's almost a haven uh, for, uh, to a certain degree for, for, for pedophiles and homosexuals to hide behind the cloth. I mean, a conservative estimates are that 30 to 40 percent of Catholic priests are either practicing homosexuals or trying, quote unquote, to be celibate. Okay. So uh, the disgrace about that, and it's the only peeve I have, is John Paul should clean up the mess here all around with these with these priests that all they do is move them like pawns from place to place after they're, they're, they're found out that, they're, that they uh, abused about 10 altar boys. I mean, Father Ritter was farmed out to Rochester, New York. Whatever happened to him? I mean, they never excommunicate anybody. They never defrock anybody. Any issue, then they, they, they hold you hostage by saying you're creating scandal and you're going to go to hell if you bring this up. I mean, this is ludicrous. Let them get rid of these people. Let them, let them abolish celibacy. Christ never demanded it. And there's nowhere. And as a matter of fact, celibacy for the first thousand years wasn't even in the church. This is man-made. I, I don't know the actual historical date, but I know for the first uh, 900 or 1,000 years in the church, uh, you didn't have to be celibate. Uh, and when it came about... Uh, it was after the uh, schism of uh, 1054 A.D. that uh, this uh, took root. Just let me make one other quick point. But the Greek church has a good... You, you can get married up to a point, and then you can only become a bishop. And I only want to say this to all those pseudos. Christ said this. Before you take the splinter, and I'm saying this to the hierarchy in the Catholic church, before you take the splinter out of your own eye, out of your brother's eye, take the plank out of your own. That's all I got to say. You sound very angry. Yeah, I'm I am angry. angry. Well, you know what because, I said. Because it, it's an abomination. Well, I have to be uh, Catholic, yeah, and, and yeah. they sweep these things year in and year out. Well, if, if, course, if, if, if you are, look, 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 if you are not comfortable in the Catholic church, there are many, many, many churches. No, I'm very comfortable. Oh, I just told you okay. it's my only issue. If you were listening, like you say to your listeners, if you were paying attention, I just told you it was the only issue I had with my church. I'm very happy with my church oh. other than that. So listen next time, Bob. You know what? Listen. Just you, you, are, you know what? Let me tell you something. You are an angry jerk, a real super jerk. I'm glad I don't know you personally. What a scumbag. That last guy, that that uh, real jerkola, Tony. Uh, that, that's a classic. That's a, here's a guy. Yeah, man, I'm out, I'm out, I'm out. But he says, no, I'm very comfortable. I'm very happy with the church. There's a guy who really loved to punch his dumb nose right down his stupid bigoted throat. And uh, you know, Pat Schroeder is a real douchebag, a real super douchebag. And uh, why do people? Why does she get so much attention? I'll tell you why. I just told you why. Hi, Bob. Bob, I'd like to preface my remarks by uh, praising you and uh, your screener, Mike. Yeah, what are you uh, going to say about women today, Joe? Well, uh, it's, uh, you know, tied in with the Kimberly... I mean, you talk about a one-issue guy, that's you, Joe. Yeah, but... Bob... Why don't you go out and make it with some chicky poo so you can stop uh, this obsession with, with hating women? But it's not... It's, you see, the issue is not me, Bob. The issue is that uh, nobody else besides... Hey, you know, there are a lot of hard-up broads out there that you could make it with, Joe. Well, I, Bob, I'm, I welcome any any broad, as you put it, to uh, approach me. Uh, I'm waiting for it. You know, I'm waiting for the day when women will have the guts to approach a guy as uh, as um, as a. Uh, hey, I, I know a fellow. I know a fellow who's a, a great travel agent. Women are approaching him all the time. He has to beat them off with baseball bats. Oh, he's they're approaching him. Why is that? Well, he 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 has no time for them. He's a happily married man. He's not interested, but he's got to beat them off all the time. Well, he must he must be enticing them with some something. I don't know. Well, I tell you, he's flamboyant. He's uh, he's debonair, and he's probably the best dancer this side, uh, this side of the uh, cucaracha. I see all the characteristics that they that they condemn when uh, when they when they decide to. Uh you know, uh, get a little bit uh, perturbed at you. They all of a sudden call that man a womanizer and turn on him. But uh, I'm not like that. I'm an honest, down to earth, straight, straight shooter, and uh, I don't do any kind of uh, dance for them. And I guess that's why they're not interested in the decent guys like me. Bob, if I could make the point about Kimberly Mays, um, 
I think that th this case to me highlights uh, and uh, emphasizes um, the, uh, the plight of uh, fathers, not custodial fathers, when it comes to divorce, uh, custody battles, and visitation uh, battles. It seems to me two things. Number one, if they're going to take the, uh, the view of Kimberly Mays, her opinion, as, as carrying weight now, and four 14-year-old uh, children is carrying weight, then it seems to me may maybe they should um, do this uh, in, in, all, in all custody battles and uh, visitation conflicts. And well, maybe, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Yeah, First of continue all, to pay support for Kimberly while he was denied all rights to her. And this occurs to uh, many, many fathers. All right, thank you. Become, you're becoming boring, repetitious, and dumb. Thanks, Bob. It's uh, time to check in with Joe Nolan over there in the Metro Traffic Control Center. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the latest on the Grand Central Parkway. Well, Bob, I, I think if we if we just sit around and let these uh, incidents happen, uh, it's going to give uh, it's going to give these nations to think and say, hey, you know, they're just not going to do anything. Let's just let's, uh, well, bomb. what incidents are we letting happen? Well, the World Trade Center bombing. Do we let it happen? We didn't let it happen, but I mean, it, we should have we should have struck whoever was the culprit and the culprit at that time. Uh, have we not apprehended the individuals believed responsible? Yes, sir, we have. Okay, but thank you. On WABC, uh, really, I I shouldn't be doing this work. I, I because maybe I could go to a hypnotist and he could give me a a hypnotic suggestion in which he would say, "Stupidity does not bother you." Ignorance does not disturb you. Carbones have no negative impact on you <laughs> whatsoever. <laughs> oh. uh, wake last night watching uh, Larry the King of Carbones, uh, Larry King, and he had um, a couple of people on with regarding the uh, Reginald Denny case. He had a guy named Chilton, who was an anti-gang activist, and a lady by the name of Isola Foster, I believe, and she was with the Blacks for Family Values. Once again, we get into the same old issue of comparing uh, the Reginald Denny case to Rodney King. But there is no comparison. Absolutely not. Um, the two don't belong in the same breath. Yep, you're right. And what, what, what you see is you have, you have um, Larry King pandering to this guy Chilton's viewpoint. Well, of course he would. Larry King has never met a... A black uh, behind. He didn't want to kiss. Yep. It, the real beautiful thing about it. I'm glad. I'm glad I actually watched it because, as Ola Foster, her viewpoints were very, very refreshing. Um, she, she was taken to task by Larry King several times for very minor things. Um, what happened once was some black racist called up saying that she was uh, siding with the white oppressors. You know, her her reply was. The problems in the black community in the last 20 years stem from blacks oppressing blacks, not from whites oppressing blacks. And uh, she's disturbed by the fact that of the lack of black leaders stating this fact publicly, and for, for good reason. I admire her courage for saying all that, and I just wish uh, more people would come out publicly saying these things. Isn't it terrible that a person who says what this black woman said has to be congratulated for having courage? Whereas uh, the other side, uh, we don't have to congratulate them for having courage. Now, now why? Why? Well, the answer is uh, uh, the other side never apologizes, never explains, never excuses. They just roll, out, roll on. Meanwhile, the rest of us, with the exception of yours truly and one or two other people, knocking themselves out, apologizing. Well, I'm not a racist, but. Well, I'm not a racist, but. And Larry King, he's a disgrace. Bah, bah, he's Larry King. Bah, 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 bah. I wonder if he ever paid off all his gambling debts. The answer, no. That's why he had to leave Miami. Care system? Um, you know, i got to give credit to uh, President Clinton, uh, even though I didn't want him in office. Uh, he's making the first move that I really see it toward the uh, national health care system, and I really believe that our nation really needs to take a step towards that. Um, as I can see, most uh, other world powers have a national health care uh, system. Cut it out. That's no reason. Listen, if, if the world powers, as you call it, are so great, why is it that when people have a, a particular illness, they come to the United States for care? Huh? Think about it, you dumbo. I can't stand stupidity. That's that, So what am I doing this show for? How stupid? I can't. It's like a, a guy who's a dentist says, I can't stand looking at teeth. Ah, oh, dear me. Let's... Uh, just a comment on your last caller. 
which is uh, reference to IQs going up and IQs going down. My understanding of an intelligence quotient is that's something that you were born with and that you have. It has nothing to do with which race of people you go to school with. IQ score can be affected by the education that that person is getting. And uh, if a person becomes slothful, if he becomes lazy, if he becomes uh, motivated in doing nothing, uh, then, of course, uh, his IQ will go down. But if he's motivated, the IQ will improve. So uh, Tony was correct. Mm, I disagree still, but thank you. It's all right. Bye. And, of course, she had a British accent, so that makes what she said more authentic and having more weight than what I said. Yes, um... I moved my family out, and the American dream is not that far away, Bob. Still out there. We just moved to the outskirts, suburbs, you know. I um took my family 60 miles away, and I listen to you sometimes. You know, every day on my trip in, I work nights in Manhattan, and I'm in a major hotel over here. I'm behind the scenes, you see a lot of things, you know. And I've been in a hotel. And they had a group of people, the NAACP, and their motto is, they live to harass white people. And it's a shame, but when you can uh, hear them say it, I don't know why, because the white people gave them what they got. A lot of them earned it, a lot of them deserve it. But it's a shame. All right, thank you for the call, Keith. That was Keith checking in. Uh... I don't know, maybe Keith is enjoying a little yaki dock. A little yaki dock. <laughs> Where'd that term come up? <laughs> oh, dear me. I was in a fast food place waiting to get my, my order, and there were two rather large young men with a little boy about three years old, and they were paying no attention to him, and he began to smile at me, and I smiled back. Then he waved a little, and I waved back. And one of the bigger young men turned and noticed it. And they turned the child around, and they leaped at him with a karate scream and kept it up and then turned him to face me. And this little baby looked at me and ran toward me with his fist up. And I thought, how very sad. But you know, Bob, the next time I see a kid, I'm going to smile at him again. And let's hope he won't want to kick me in the head. I... I... I don't know, maybe I missed something here, but I don't understand what, what's wrong here. I don't, you smiled at a kid, and because you smiled at a kid and he smiled back, somebody beat him up? I don't understand. No, they didn't beat him up. They just frightened him. In other words, he was not to smile at me. I, I was an enemy. Why? why? <laughs> I don't understand. What made you an enemy? I don't understand. Well, I don't like to get into race, Bob. Well, um, did, I'm a Caucasian, and they were not. Uh, Caucasian, is that, <laughs> yeah. what are you afraid to say, you're white? No, I'm not. Well, then why don't you say it then? I am white. Well, why didn't you tell, why didn't you tell us at the beginning uh, that uh, he was black and you were white, and the other kids that didn't like the fact he smiled at you, uh, they were also black? What are you so afraid of? Well, I'm not really afraid of anything except I'm perhaps glad. being insulted. I'm glad to hear you say you're not really afraid. Uh... Strange, that was a strange broad. I smiled at him, he smiled at me, he gave a wave, I gave a wave. What a weird broad. For Ruth, what a weird broad. I mean, that's one of the weirdest. You see, what bothers me about her is she was a, the story had no meaning unless you knew in advance that she was talking about a group of black kids. That's what made it the story. And I'm thinking, well, what is so unusual about this? He smiled at me. I smiled at him. He waved at me. I waved back. Hey, Ruth, if you're still listening, will you? i tell you what I'd like you to do. Go to the medicine cabinet, get a bunch of razor blades, and gargle, will you? Get a... Hello, Bob. Yeah, um, hello, Bob, he uh, said, okay. Yeah, there's a lot of weird people going around. Oh, this is Kenny. Hey, Kenny. Yeah. I thought I thought you you got together with Lucy Ray and got married. Never uh, never worked out. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, what would you like to say, Kenny? I got about uh, about a hundred things on my mind. Well, it's too bad we only have twenty seconds. Okay. Uh, listen, this this thing with John Denudnik or John, what's his name? 
Yeah, John Demonuk, yeah. yeah I call him John Demonuk. They're going to have to, they, they face a hard rock, this, the Israeli Supreme Court. On one hand, uh, if they let him go, the, the, these uh, Holocaust uh, survivors are going to make a big stink over it. Well, that's they right. They let him go anyway, but they said it was double jeopardy. And they had him for seven years, and they, they could have tried him on other things. The thing is, they may have to let him go, let him go, uh, if you, the Ukraine come back to this country, and the people in a quiet way don't like it, put a hit on him, kill him, that's all. I was involved in that thing. You know, it's to what do it. You were involved in what? Going after these uh, Nazi war criminals. You went after Nazi war criminals? Yeah, up in Yorkville, 1947. I see. Okay, Kenny, you thank see? you. There goes Kenny. He gets a, he's a nice guy, but he gets me nervous, you know what I mean? I don't know if you're aware of it, but in today's Daily News, there was a letter to the editor from a certain Helen Scardis who was shocked how you could call Hillary Clinton a bitch. A most, a most truthful title, I may add, and what kind of example you set the children. Well, Helen, let's see. Number one, you probably are all for condoms being given out at school. That's a great example for your children. Number two, Heather has two mommies. You probably love that book for your children. Number three, when was the last time you heard Bob Grant ask for respect? And even if he does, you couldn't give him the respect he truly deserves. And the last thing, there are probably thousands upon thousands of young kids who in the middle of August, the middle of the day, are listening to a political mature radio talk show. Get with it, Helen. Take your kids out once in a while from under that little rack you live under. Thanks, Bob. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and the man is correct in the uh, voice of the people, uh, Helen Scardis, C-A-S-C-A-R-D-I-S, from Jersey City, uh, did uh, send in this little note, and the editor printed it, which is uh, okay with me. I mean, after all, we have to have other people's names in the papers. We can't just keep having the same person recycled over and over again. No, it's not the front page of National Review. It's not the front page of U.S. News World Report. But heck, we'll take we'll take it. Here's the letter. How can Bob Grant get respect when he calls the president's wife, Hillary, a bitch twice in five minutes? This occurred on August 11th. What a terrible example, he says, for our children. Uh, twice on August 11th. All right, Helen, if you're listening, uh, this is uh, August the, uh, don't tell me, don't anybody tell me, I believe it's the 24th. Okay, August 24th. Now you can write another letter to the editor. I'll do it three times. She's a bitch. She's a bitch. She's a bitch. Now you can write another letter saying, on August 24th, he said it three times. And guess what, Helen? That was not within the space of five minutes. That was in the space of five seconds. That's what records are for, to be broken. Hey, Helen, if you're listening, give us a call here at WABC Talk Radio. And it's, uh, in Nowadays, from um, some perspective partners what do you mean like you know like i um i introduce myself to women and they look down their nose at me well maybe you're too short i don't know they look down their nose at you i don't know what, what do you mean you go up to women and and you say let's have sex i mean just uh nice and subtle like that no i say hi you know oh you say hi in other words you don't want to rush it i mean you don't want to hurry it i know but you know it's like they're so afraid of AIDS. I mean, who cares if they get AIDS? It's not like they're people anyway. Well, why don't you get a card saying, I know your name is Jay. Let's say your last name is Farquhar. I, Jay Farquhar, have been certified to be HIV negative. Why don't you yeah. do that? You want to have a card? Then they probably find some other excuse. Uh, they're so afraid of everything. I bet they're just waiting for the cobwebs to grow. Well, maybe they're just find you repulsive. <laughs> that's, that's possible, Mr. Grant. All right. Uh, I'm not going to ask any more questions, Jay, because you're weird. People. Uh, two weeks ago, you were uh, talking about the owner of the Yankees saying how you despised him. And at that moment, it reminded me of somebody that I despise, namely James Carvel. Uh, listen, I'll take a, a thousand George Steinbrenners to one James Carville. Yeah, and uh, all... Now, 
Uh, what brought that to my mind See, was... See, Steinbrenner is just an egomaniac pain in the neck, uh, but Carville is, uh, is a vicious, uh, evil person. Gee, come on. Yeah, that's... Uh, and what brought that to mind was that uh, he, running Christie, um, running um, the governor's... Flim uh, Flam Florio, Flim Flam Florio. Right. He's running Flim Flam's campaign. He's running his campaign, and how does he do it? The same way as he ran the presidential campaign, meaning divide the people, the haves and have-nots, the... Uh, well, that's right. It, it worked uh, to get Slick Willie in, and uh, so he how did it he... work to get this uh, scumbag yeah, so, back in. Uh, so what is he doing? He breaks into uh, Christie's estate in Jersey to take those pictures to show uh, the, have, yeah. the people of the uh, lesser economic groups right. that, look, look, uh, in other words, hate the people with money. That's not... We should revere people that made it up. Yeah, he ought to be careful, though. He doesn't want to... He, he ought to be careful because he's got money, and uh, we might start hating him. Well, I already do. On WABC, James Carville, what, a, what, a, what an evil person. A Every friend. day you're calling people names, and you don't give people a chance to talk to you who disagree with you. Uh, I don't know what the problem is. You're some kind of self-righteous demagogue to me. Maybe that's what I am. You know, I think that's a good way to describe me. Uh, Laura of Patterson has correctly described me, a self-righteous demagogue. Now, those of you who try to describe me to friends back in the West or someplace where they haven't heard me, and they say, well, what is Bob Grant? What is he? Think of what Laura of Patterson just called me, a self-righteous demagogue. That's good, Laura. That's good. I like that. The Wall Street Journal had an article about Rodney King. He got a desk ticket last week because he was uh, drunk. And he got pulled over and he was .20. And they let him go because, obviously, Rodney King cannot be touched. And I think that's the way our criminal justice system is going with these people who seem to get special preference. Yeah, well, what, uh, what I would suggest uh, Mr. King do, the great Rodney King, uh, I would suggest that he put a sign on his car uh, or get... a. Uh, vanity license plates to indicate that it's Rodney King driving so that no matter what he does, the police will go, oh, oh, don't, don't, don't. see that guy going 100 miles an hour, just ran over that little girl and went up the sidewalk and, and then uh, bounced uh, into uh, all, of that, um, all of that stuff there on the sidewalk and is, is going across a, a red light. That's, that's Rodney King, so, oh, it is, oh, okay. And they won't bother uh, following him uh, blowing the siren, flashing the lights, and pulling him over. Don't bother, you know. So, so this way they know it's him. They just let him go, do what he wants to do. Because what? Tony of Brooklyn, people have asked me, where is Frank of Queens? I don't know. Maybe he's on vacation. I'm going to call about marijuana before. Uh, I believe it. it is possible if you want to yourself to do, decide how much you want to take or not take, but you can function as a normal person in a normal human normal world you know, being a zombie and enjoy the relaxations of enjoying a marijuana joint maybe when you come home from work as per se to a businessman who comes home and gets that double martini well, uh, why, why do you people need a double well, martini I don't, I don't, or a joint why do you need that well, it's 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 I, I can compare it I, I can compare it and people say well okay you're talking about like there's no comparison but I believe there is uh I, I don't know. I, I, I work at a store I do with people all day, about 10 hours a day. Uh, I, I run a food store. Uh, and so the, strain, the, case, the strain have, is so much you need a marijuana. No, no, right? no, not, not need it, Mr. Grant, but like everybody Well, if has, you don't need every, it, why, wait a minute, if you don't need no, 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 it, why do you me. take it? You can't, have it. you can't have it both ways. I uh, know, it's not having it both ways. What I'm trying to say is that if a businessman that comes home from a... a Cut it out with the businessman analogy. Cut it out. Why not? Why? Because it sounds idiotic. Sounds like I don't, I don't sounds like it's so. okay. If you, but, oh, I, I, I run a I run a food store. Okay, I run a food uh, store, and I come home, and I have to kiss people's butt, and that's my job. That's what I get paid for. Just like you, well, you don't have to. You don't have to. You can sit there and do that, and you come home and say, okay, I put my feet up, and I do read the newspaper, and I am a Republican, 
And I did vote for George Bush. And I know you're going to say it doesn't mean doesn't mean diddly. But what I'm just saying is that you can go on and you can live without affecting anybody else. I'm not saying legalize it. I don't think any drug should be legalized. All I'm saying is that it's at of all the drugs that are out there, it's the least that harms people. It doesn't affect other people's lives. Like hey, uh, I'll tell you what, Mike. I don't want to take any more calls on that. I very rarely tell you. I don't want to take any more calls on this because I've heard this for 20 a good 26 years or so, 28 years, 30 years, the same old stuff, the same old stuff, the same old stuff. Hey, listen, Jim, I don't care. Smoke as many joints as you want. Put a, put one joint in your mouth, another joint in uh, each ear, and Mr. wherever Gray, else you can find it over there, and you're light them all, will you? Get off Have my phone, you fake. You know, over the, ladies and gentlemen, if I sound a little testy about it, it's because I'm just sick and tired of hearing the same old thing. It's a bore. It's a bore. And these people got a call. I didn't ask Jim to call. I didn't say, hey, Jim, I want to know how you feel about marijuana. But he wants to justify it. Guess what? He doesn't have to justify it. He doesn't have to justify it. Not to me. Maybe he's trying to justify it to himself, trying to rationalize. You cannot have it both ways. You can't call and say, oh, listen, it really doesn't do anything on the one hand, and yet on the other hand, say how great it is. What's great about it? Does it blot out reality for you? Hey, guess what? When you croak, that'll blot out reality forever. You got a long time to be dead. Why do you want to kill your mind while you're alive? And don't give me the crap about the martini. That's just as stupid. I called to uh, mention a meeting that Attorney General Abrams had with Mayor Dinkins up in the Riverdale section today. He was hooted down, I understand. There were yells of liar. Here he comes out, this attorney general, this fraud, with his history of having the way he handled the Tawana Brawley case, to stand behind Mayor Dinkins and his handling of the Korean boycott and his, uh, obviously, the handling of the, the Crown Heights so-called disturbance. So uh, with Attorney General Abrams backing, I think this is a case for Mayor Dinkins, where with friends like that, he doesn't need enemies. Well, what did you expect that uh, putrescence known as Bobby <laughs> Abrams? What did you expect him to do? That's what I expected. But yeah. the strange, the, the happy thing is that the people that turned out to listen for this endorsement were not a bunch of patsies and yelled back at him. And it was not a happy event for either of them. Good. That's music to my ear. Right. That's what I figured you'd want to hear. Thank you, Al. <laughs> okay. Al made the day for me. Let's play that uh, God Bless America or, you know, My Country Tis the Like, you're the greatest I American know, that I ever know, lived. I know. Wait a minute. First of all, I have nothing to do with that. Well, they play it. They play it. That's right. They okay. play it. Hang okay. on. A, hold on a minute. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. Okay, but it doesn't fit you at all. I mean, you, the greatest American ever, when you... Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, 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 all it, hold on a minute. Can I speak to you? Wait, wait, Christ. wait, but hold on a minute. Who said I was the greatest American? You, they play, these people, whoever, you said you don't, you, have, you say you have nothing to do with it. Somebody thinks you're the greatest American there, and I think you're the worst American there ever left. I mean, part of the problem here in New York City is mainly because of you. You listen to any other radio station, everybody gets along. Here, you think the world is in a turmoil. I mean, only on your, your station and the other jerk, Jay Diamond, do you think New York is up? at each other's throat every minute, every hour of the day. That's not true. I'm glad to hear that it's not true. Apparently, I've been, the, the apparently, apparently I've been living in a fantasy. But let's get back to your fixation with that little uh, signature there. Uh, a few bars from... Uh, My da, 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 da. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't fit you. Why, why, why do you think... Why do you think somebody is saying, I'm the greatest American? I don't hear those words. I don't know. I mean... Wait, Pop, they say, my country, to the theater. What's that got to do with, what's that got to do with, well, okay, that's just, what, would you like them to change 
the tune? What, what, like what would you like them to play? What would you like them to play? What would you like them to play? Well, I don't even know what the... If you can't respect the president, it definitely doesn't oh, I, I, Not only do I disrespect him, I hey, despise him. you got to respect him. I he despise has, him and I loathe him. No, no, this is not a fascist state. I don't have to respect him. I don't have to respect him. Have you ever heard of... Oh, get off my phone, you little creep. You little weasel. Uh, Philip, what's on your mind this afternoon? Hey, Mr. Grant, good afternoon. How are you? Want to chat? Listen, give this guy my home phone number. This is a personal call, obviously. I thought it was a call uh, having to do with the program. And uh, he uh, hung up because he's, he's, a, uh, he's a jerk. Hello, Mr. Grant. How are you? Uh, they never learn, do they? They never learn. See the show? I, in, in, no, no, I didn't see the show. Yeah, but, it, but, but, it, but you keep saying he I took am, him apart. He did, but I, and I find it difficult to I'm believe. I'm unbiased, though. Uh, I, 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 no, I you're not unbiased. Way. No, you're not unbiased. When you say he took him apart, he did. Uh, that, I'll, give you, I'll give you three. Uh, he, the, no, computer you, enhance, uh, the computer enhancement, he said, was an inch above the accurate, the, the uh, actual shot. When that you was say one. he took him apart, he did. That is your admission. That is an admission on your part that you don't have an open mind. Well, I'm not going to argue with you because I understand you're on the Richard Bay show where they have the intellectual elites of the world. So I'm not going to argue with you. Oh, all right. Well, then, then, then in that, if you're not going to argue with me, well, then what's the point in even continuing the conversation? Uh, he sounded a little double-gated to me anyway. It made me nervous. thought he might sneeze on me and give me AIDS. The problem Pat has with neoconservatism is, it, is that it's an anathema to the founding fathers' beliefs. Oh, cut it if out. You, if you read uh, America's True Foreign Policy, a book that quotes over 100 quotes from the founding fathers, you'll find out that they were isolationist, protectionist, non-interventionist, nationalist, not internationalist, and they supported self-sufficiency and independence. We signed the Declaration of Independence, not interdependence among nations. Neoconservatism is Trotsky internationalism. Ah, oh, cut it out, would you? And they're, they're looking, they're sucking up to their masters, who Benjamin Franklin exposed. Why don't, you, why, 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 don't you, why don't you go to a John Birch meeting or something? The John Birch is a Jewish porn thing, trying to divert attention. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy. You, you, you know what it is with guys like you? The you really had a... You, you, no, no, you know... We're not afraid to hey, it, No, no, Tom, what it is with guys like you is you're anti-Semites. And, so you, and you, don't even Christ have, Christ you don't even have the guts to come out and say that you're an anti-Semite. So you hide behind, you hide behind these the phony show. names. You hide behind these phony names and these phony causes. And... Uh, if, uh, if you are linking yourself with Pat Buchanan, then what you're saying is Pat you're an anti-Semite and he's an anti-Semite. Well, he's not an anti-Semite. He may be he may be wrong on NAFTA. No, he's he right may, on NAFTA. Oh, he's he's right not on an NAFTA. internationalist like you. Yeah. You hate America. I hate America. Yes, you do. You want to <laughs> destroy American sovereignty? Oh, dear. Well, what, what, what can I say to a nihilist like you? Except, I'm not a nihilist. I say we should... No, you're a nihilist. Be, you're we'll a nihilist. Oh, we'll get, get off my phone, you little weasel. Why do I have to have these weasels? ...their agenda going, then in, in their community, uh, they will find no black support. See, I, I do believe that somewhere in, in the black, there's an inherent gene, uh, a tribalistic type gene. Most people... It's not active active in most people, but there are some that it is, and that's the militant black. The tribalistic black. gene? Yeah. yeah. Boy, I tell you, you're a fruitcake. You're really way out of left field. A tribalistic gene. Yeah. Maran. You have to see some of the what things that I have come across in the past 15 years. There's no, there's no description uh, or there's no way of, of describing how they think how they act, what is reason to them. Men that, that would, would kill another man because he didn't like the way another man looked at him, that is that is enough right there to end a life. Well, that's uh, being paranoid. No, it's not. It's reality, Bob. I've seen no, it no, I don't mean it's over. paranoid on your part. I mean, if you kill someone because you don't like the look they gave you, that's being paranoid. But they have, blacks today have a term called diss. I mean, if you diss me or disrespect yeah, I know, me. I know, I know. Now, there are people that will kill another man, and the, the, 
the reason. Wait, wait a minute. Let's history. stop. Hold it. Let's let's stop right now. Sure. Uh, if someone were to ask me, that guy Sal from Babylon, mm. what was his point? Who knows? Maybe somebody might might have heard you on the show and didn't tune you out. Although if they did, I wouldn't blame them. Okay. And they might say, "What was that guy talking about at almost five thirty? What will I tell him? Sal, what will I tell him? The point is this. Look, Try to, and you're trying to tell me that you don't have a vested interest in promulgating uh, these uh, anti-Semitic statements. I submit to you that you are... They are not anti-Semitic. I, I submit to you that well, you are, that that you are a pretender. You, you call with this... Anti-Semitic. You, you call... Well, be, well they, because if it walks like a duck, you know the rest of that. And you are walking Most and Jews, talking like a duck. Most Jews come from Kazakhstan, which are not even anywhere near. Ah, uh, the Khazars, the right? Khazars. So how can it be... Yeah, that? here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, this man has just exposed himself as the ultimate the consummate, the quintessential anti-Semite. Can you deny this? You little cheesy. 90% of the people who call Jews. You phony, you call, you call with this Uriah Heap. Gee, thank you for taking my call, Mr. Grant. Oh, Mr. Grant, I just wanted to, because I just wanted to add this. Now I'll tell you why world, I really called. The world knows who, what you are. You've exposed yourself. You've sold out this country and our people for what, a paycheck, a little time on the radio? We why? Why? Think. Why? Because because I'm defending Jews against this anti-Semitic was, attack. Was not the Russian Revolution paid because, for, financed by by New York Jews? Is this not a fact? Because because I because so I don't because I don't like Jews. anti-Semitism. Are you saying? Who's, who's, uh, are you saying that? There, are you, are you saying that there's a devious reason? Huh? I'm saying that most of the traitors that we have are Jews, including John Pollock. Are you going to say that he's not a Jew? I would love to play this whole conversation over and hear how you began protesting your innocence and I how I knew my I could tell by I could tell by your serpentine voice I could tell immediately what you are I you are such a hateful I don't have to slime ball like a prostitute on the radio just to get ratings Mr. Grant you attack the blacks because you feel they have no power but you are afraid uh, to attack, attack the, the Jews blacks. because you know that they run this, the news media why don't you admit it for a buck. What do you mean, they, what do you mean they run the news? You sold out what do you mean? On your country. Oh, I sold out my country because because I'm arguing with you about your anti-Semitism, eh? Oh, it's always anti-Semitism when a foreign invader comes to our country and destroys the Western civilization. We're not talking How about, a, we're not, we're not talking the about a foreign invader. How many Christians we're, talking, are we're talking about you, and you no, are a sick, the Jews. Don't miserable me. creep. You are a sick, miserable creep. You know that? I despise you. I think you are the lowest of the low. No, you don't. I tell you, I really, I really despise bastards like that. I really do. I really do. You know, when I was talking about retiring a couple of weeks ago, and then Manelli had to come along with us. Where is he? He leaves early, this guy. Hey, Don, he left early again. Um, no, in all seriousness... Mike of Rockland County, that no good son of a bitch who was just on the phone right now, and I'm sorry for using such language. I'd like to use even more, uh, even stronger language. You think it's easy to sit here and put up with guys like him every day? Well, I got news for you. It's not. I think I'm going to revamp the program. I think I'm just going to read clippings from newspapers and tell you what I think, and every now and then, allow someone to get on the phone who's just going to say, Hey, Bob, make a dittos! Yeah, hello, Bob. Uh, I have to clear up some disinformation you were spouting out yesterday. Uh, the Jerusalem Post, August 5th, 1938, and reaffirmed by the Broward Jewish, Jewish Journal, 225-92, that Lenin was, in fact, a Jew. And Stalin, although he was a Georgian, married a Jewish and surrounded himself with some of the most insidious anti-Christ kikes on the planet, which took pleasure in murdering 30 million white Christians, filling their goal. I guess from the start I, 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 that I, Satan, their father, I gave them. Thank you. Satan is the father of the Jews? Is that That's what, what Jesus saying? Christ told me, and he's the only king I obey. Uh, Not Jesus the Jewish Christ, world. Jesus Christ told you that? Yes, he did, through the scripture, John 8, 44, Matthew 23, 8. I tell you, John folks. John 1, 3, 12. 
I tell you, folks, I tell you, I tell you. Jesus Christ, the that's, Bob, that, you're going to have to answer to him, you Yehudi, Sheenie. That's uh, your interpretation, and uh, oh, you, you're you no... Oh, you? get off, get off my phone. Well, and they're, they're out again, they're out again. I tell you something, we ought to have a convention of all these virulent, sick anti-Semites. We ought to have a convention... Um, a, a historic convention. Why don't we hold it on the main deck of the Titanic? We're not for one to all these other ones back down. Really? Uh, you, I guess you uh, don't listen much to the Bob Grant show because there's no such thing as an oddball topic. There's no such thing as an oddball caller. Not on this show. Well, I, I do listen. Uh, I listen to everybody. I mean, what I ought to do is do this program from a circus tent, for heaven's sake. <laughs> right. Right. I, I call rats. And that's all it was, was a car accident. And I'm so embarrassed for the decent black people that I know that the, the police had to lead these people away in handcuffs just to appease these warriors. And these warriors are grown-ups. They're not little kids. And as you know, I have a, a black friend, a friend at a flea market that I do, Tom, and I can imagine how embarrassed he must be to know that they have to treat them like children to be taken away in, in handcuffs just to appease these people. It's, it's such an embarrassment. If it happened in an Italian neighborhood, it was Italian, I, I would die of embarrassment. I, I just, it's unbelievable that like, you're dealing with little children, that the war is right away, there's a car accident with a black and a white involved in it. It's, it's absolutely an embarrassment the way uh, it has to be handled. I, I, I guess the message that Anthony wanted to impart was he's embarrassed. I get the feeling he's embarrassed. If he said embarrassment one more time, I would scream. Grown men aren't supposed to scream. This was a fake, phony Colorado. He's pleading a case and everything else. It's these 50 governors that are responsible. They hire and they put on whatever these half-assed judges on the bench that can't possibly pass a decent sentence or laws if you got friends. It started out with the Mandez case. The it started out with the what? Well, stop. Hold yeah. it. Okay. It started out with what? Uh, with the Ma Mandez, the Judge Mandez. With the Mendez rights, the son. Mendez. What, what these rights you, they read to you? Miranda. Miranda. I'm sorry, Mar Judge Miranda. Who was he? Him. He was not a judge. What was he? M M what was he? Uh, Miranda was uh, a um, an, an escapee who had been uh, charged with a crime. No, that's the son. But the dad wasn't he a judge? No. And had his three friends that set him free. No. The Mendez is... Mendez. Uh, Lou, you're making, uh, me, you're I, I, making I, I, me nervous, Lou. Galones like that really make me nervous. Uh, Ed, you're on WABC. Hello, Mendez. I called about, I called about uh, Giuliani. Uh, you know, Bob, I'd like to make reference to the article in today's Newsday, the uh, successor to the Communist Daily Worker, uh, by the male uh, dingbat Robert Reno. Now, we all know who he is. Yeah, he's a cousin of that uh, douchebag in, uh, in the... The other uh, thing about attorney, non-general Janet Reno. Right. That's right. right. Now, now, this malignant, uh, mental, non-giant, uh, Robert Reno, clobbers Giuliani for not running an intelligent campaign. Now, now get that, for not running an intelligent campaign. Uh, the implication, I must conclude, is that David Dinkins is running an intelligent campaign. Now, anyone, anyone who concludes that David Dinkins is intelligent in any way has to have his head examined. And having read previous articles, Bob, uh, by the fool uh, Robert Reno, I must come to the conclusion that really he is in need of desperate psychiatric care. Now, this bum, Reno, who puts down Giuliani, really could not shine Giuliani's shoes. This bum, Robert Reno, uh, represents the scum and the masters of deceit presently in power in this country. He represents the masters of disinformation, who I'm sure, Bob, will come out with some falsehood about Giuliani a couple of days before the election, and after the election, they'll apologize, maybe. Bob, you know, we've got our work cut out for us. 
we're in very serious trouble, as you say, because these people for the next three and a half years are going to ruin this country com completely. It's going to be irreparable. And uh, one aside, nothing to do with what I just said, I, I think we should all remember, let's not call our president Hillary Rodham Clinton, but let's call her Mrs. Bill Clinton, because that'll rattle her leftist feminist lumbago. <laughs> thank you, Bob. All right, Tony, thank you. You know, the, the fact of the matter is, is Captain Gates and members of the 761st were the victims of David Dinkins and Jesse Jackson's attempt after the Lemberg Nelson verdict with the aid of Channel 13 to try to pull the wool. It gall that the participants have discounted this story, even the, the producers of this, uh, the, the channel, channel 13 has discounted this story. David Dinkins still stands by this as having merit and value. Well, the guy I used to refer to as the men's room attendant has learned well from uh, Sharpie Sharpton. You know, Sharpie Sharpton, even after it was exposed completely beyond any shadow of a doubt that the Tawana Banana case was a fake phony fraud, that it was a total hoax, he still goes around saying, no, it's true, you see. Uh, guys like uh, Sharpie Sharpton and the guy I used to refer to as the men's room attendant, uh, Dapper Dave, the man in lieu of a mayor, the guy who proved you can avoid paying taxes and survive. Um, these guys, uh, uh, they, they know that, that the, the, the basic uh, black constituency will believe them not because logic is on their side, not because veracity is on their side, but because pigmentation is on their side. And as far as the rest of us are concerned, they have only contempt for us, so what's the difference? But they think... Well, Charlie, I think that uh, you already uh, know what they thought. They were thinking that by uh, fobbing this story off, it would, uh, it would get a lot of uh, Jews who already... Uh, were uh, suckers for their cause, but had somewhat uh, become estranged for many valid reasons over the past few years, uh, would uh, euchre them, seduce them, and they would say, oh, yeah, you know, really, gee, uh, uh, we got to help the blacks. Look, after all, uh, they rescued our people from Dachau and Buchenwald. Uh, they, uh, you know, they know that there is an, an almost... Uh, uh, an almost uh, genetic capacity uh, to reach out to them on the part of the uh, uh, the uh, New York Jew or the Jew in general. And uh, I believe that it was their hope to seduce them uh, well, that uh, produced And don't forget, Peggy Tishman is not black. I know, and I remember the opening of the Apollo. I thought that that was a very arrogant opening, as if the Jews owed the, owed, owed the blacks something for them being saved. I didn't find anything conciliatory about that opening at the Apollo. I thought it was very arrogant and very, expect, you know, it, there was something expected for the Jewish community because of this so-called saving of the, of the uh, death camps. Yeah, well, I guess... Uh, uh, you know, they feel it's been a long time since Mickey Schwerner and Goodman uh, gave their lives in that uh, Mississippi uh, swamp. So uh, uh, they uh, maybe they're looking for new uh, uh, martyrs. I don't know. Have a, thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you, Charlie. All right. On WABC, it's uh, Barry checking. Hello, Barry. Yeah, I'm an employee of Continental Airlines, at least here in, uh, in New York. And uh, I agree with you, there's a sick world of getting sicker. I'd like to uh, talk about a problem that the, uh, we've been having with uh, flight attendants, especially the uh, HIV-positive gay male flight attendants, of spitting and urinating into the coffee that they serve passengers. I'm sure the traveling public wouldn't appreciate it if it's known. And the only way they're going to get the uh, company to act on, uh, to, uh, to stop this practice... What practice? ...of, uh, of HIV-positive gay male flight attendants spitting into the coffee which they serve passengers. Ah, oh, cut it out. Get off the phone, you sick creep. Cut it out. Oh, really, what am I doing? Why did that get you out of Well, uh, it shouldn't surprise anybody. Liz Holzman is a, uh, a real sleaze artist. Uh, I called her a long time ago a fake, a phony, and a fraud. And even though I said it at that time, I didn't know how right I was. Uh, right now, this woman who 
And by the way, I was no admirer of Jerry the, the Chin Ferraro, but this woman who conducted an absolutely scurrilous, absolutely shameless campaign against Jerry Ferraro yes. with a lot of uh, anti-Italian overtones, uh, now she is uh, trying to uh, convince uh, the uh, liberal uh, Jewish voter uh, that she is the only one to vote for. And, um, thank you, Nick. Okay, thank you, Bob. God bless you. Uh, that guy came into the Rio diner during the election, prior to the election, with uh, about, I don't want to exaggerate, 40 Ross Perot buttons from top to bottom. He was like, he looked like, he looked like Jack Haley in The Wizard of Oz. You know, the Tin Man? Absolutely absurd. Ross Perot, one of the greatest charlatans in the history of the Republic. Hello, Richard. You're on WABC. Steps of City Hall. State Senator Manfred Ornstein endorsing Mayor Dinkins. By the way, I'm glad you mentioned that. I, I thought there was a guy wearing one of those silly masks, you know, with the big nose and there the glasses. You go. There you go. You know, those... That's the guy. I, 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 and I said, oh, look at this silly guy yeah. wearing a mask. Right. right. It was Manfred Ornstein, the ugliest man in the history exactly. of I, New York politics. I, I was thinking whether I should say that or not, but I'm glad you did. I came out of office. Absolutely, but uh, Orenstein will uh, be in that office as long as he lives because people find him amusing with that silly mask he wears. Oh, no, it's not a mask. He just, he's lucky that way. He doesn't have to buy a mask. Thank you very much. Hey, hatchet face Holzman, it's a little late for that. Ralph, you're at WABC. What's on your mind? Hello, hello, Ralph. How are you doing? Um, I am a long-time caller, first-time listener. I'd like to talk about the race. He's a long... Get a load of this guy. He's a long-time caller and a first-time listener. Yeah, that's true. And you called me Ralph. Yeah, I'd like to talk about... You're all right. Ralph. You got it all together, pal. I'd like to talk about the race relationship. This guy's name is Ralph, and he called me Ralph. Yeah. I'd like to talk about the race, race relations in New York City. Where are you from, pal? Wait, let me just finish my, the, the question. No, no, I mean, where did you originate? I, I'm from uh, Italy, just like you are. No, but, you're not. Uh, you're not from Italy. Why, why did you curse that bitch out when you were telling... You're the not. Yeah, 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 well, like you, you. Are you ashamed of where you're really from? But, no, I'm, I'm I'm from the same country you're from. No, huh? no. I'm no. A oh, like you're from you. Chicago, Illinois, I, I'm huh? I'm a guapo like you. Because I was born in Chicago, Illinois, pal. No, you're, you're just a little scumbag, that's what you are. Well, that's a show. You're the... There's a guy. There's a guy. I'm a first. Can you, can you get a little of this guy? His name is Ralph. He says, oh, oh, Ralph. Calls me Ralph. And then he says he's a first time, first time listener and a long time caller. What a jerk. Hey, pal, why don't you get your jaw rewired so we can try to understand you, you scum. By the way, uh, if you saw Andy Rooney last night, uh, you might have thought I inspired his uh, commentary. He doesn't need inspiration from anybody. He has his own. He's very creative and very capable. But when he talked about all the needless how are you's, how are you? Why do people say how are you? How are you? I was hoping that uh, guys like this last fellow on the telephone would have seen that and stopped wasting time with a, Bob, how are you? But anyway, here's Mike. Hello. No. Yes, it's been a long time, uh... Been a long time, Corleone. I've been very busy, and everybody's having sit downs. And this business between this Jewish guy and the Arab guy reminds me when you used to come to President Street, and we used to uh, iron out our differences, and you was a negotiator. You remember those days? <laughs> uh, I hope we're not on the radio, because this is personal. Well, this is a private uh, line here. You've called on the private line, and uh, nobody can hear you, uh, Don, so uh, you could talk about. Paul Needle Nose Menage or anybody, and you don't have to worry. Oh, it goes without saying. But, uh, like I said, you know, these sit downs, I'm gonna be your friend. You're gonna be my friend. And everybody's happy. And before you know it, somebody screws up, and we're back to where we started. These things happen every 10 years. You know, Bob, how it is. Let me ask you personally, do you think it's gonna last? Uh, no. I agree with you. You know, you're a great man. And the day you retire is when I'm getting the five families. All right. Together. Okay, uh, the year 2001. I'm writing it down. In 2001, summer. on New Year's Day, we'll have a big retirement party. The year 2001. You got it. Okay. Stop the ball. Do boo. Do ba. Do. 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 Do.
amore ci va a cassonare a Bob Cohen. A salute, salute, salute. A salute tutti quanti. E Mario, se provi a fare la faccina, fa me danno con le That's right, thank you. Salute. That's the first message to Mario we've had in quite a while. What, Benelli put a kibosh on that too, guys? Hey, John, I know you're on vacation, but you're probably monitoring the show like all program directors. You never really go on vacation. As a matter of fact, you live with that radio in your ear all day long. That's why you walk around with your head tilted to the side. Got to give you credit, John. You got these guys really spooked. Really spooked. I notice their noses are all very colorful. Predict right here and now. After Christy Whitman becomes governor, you'll see some action along those lines. That's George of Astoria, who each and every week, Carville, he puts up this little pipsqueak stooge scumbag to call and ask the same dumb question. He lives in Astoria. Why he's so concerned about the outcome of the election in New Jersey is beyond me, unless he's got an illegitimate son living there and he's uh, worried about... Uh, what his life will be like. Hey, George, you're a two-bit fink of the worst order. And uh, it is a day game coming from uh, Milwaukee. Therefore, this broadcast, the Bob Grant program, will not be heard. We will be preempted by the banal, uh, boring, endless, interminable, well, that's a redundancy, the interminable, um, blow by blow of the game, bringing you every play and every non-thrill. I mean, they send two guys out there, pay them a lot of money, a lot of money, plus travel expenses and the per diem, and let them pad their expense account. And uh, they sit there in a booth, and they uh, look down at the field, and they see these guys playing this game, and they tell you what they see, or at least what they think they see. And you have to count on their interpretation as being accurate. And uh, there are, yeah, people like to do that. People like to do that, and WABC has paid a lot of money for the rights to do that. Now, uh, you better listen tomorrow. And then on uh, Thursday, we'll be back to normal intelligent programming again. I do believe it's the last game of the stupid season. That is, That was one of the big things that made me hesitate in signing the new contract because uh, we carry the dumb ball games. Not this present management's fault, however. We had two uh, previous managers who made the mistake. All right, Joe, you're on WABC. Hello. Hello. And Steinbrenner, if you're listening, if you don't like what I'm saying, take your games to another station. Yeah, go ahead, Joe. Uh, Bob, I have a slight uh, small peroration to make uh similar to one that the great Frank from Queens might make, except that it's on a slightly different topic. Uh, oh, wait a minute, Joe. You want to know something, Joe? Yes. I must tell you, I want to give you a sabbatical. Take a vacation. I'm tired of your voice, and I'm tired of your putrid attitude. Joe, you're probably a nice guy, but you're a bar. You're boring. Tired of him. Why do I have to listen to the same people over and over again, for heaven's sake? Ben, you're on WABC. Hello. How, how are you, sir? This is the first time. How am I? I got to sit here. I got to sit here and listen to Joe week after week with his pathetic, uh, emasculated uh, view of life. And you ask how I am? Well, I'll tell you. Regarding the baseball season, it is high. It is long. <laughs> it is gone. No, no, no. He says, it is high. It is far. It is... How stupid. Why doesn't he get a why did he get another approach? Why does he and, get I, a, and I loved your mix uh, but I also wanted to mention, Bob, uh, the subject of former callers who are now persona non grata came up uh, last week, I think it was, and you named a few of the people who had achieved that status. <laughs> yeah. I I don't know if you intended that list to be complete, but there's one individual who identifies himself from Clifford as Clifford from Newark. Oh, yeah, he's persona you, you didn't mention. <laughs> yeah. Well, I forgot to mention him. Uh, that's how unimportant he is. But uh, uh, he's, uh, he's persona non grata. Yeah, I know. The spell I, of Old Bridge. I, I sort of miss Phil from Old Bridge uh, because I used to enjoy his calls would start out okay. And I, I knew that sooner or later he'd make a fool of himself. And it was just a question of when. And, and most of the time he did. So, well, you know, I tell you, uh, if I find a caller to be 
uh, totally uh, obnoxious to me, totally repulsive. I make them persona non grata because uh, I don't want to talk to them. Uh, I don't want to hear them. I don't want to have anything to do with them. And uh, maybe that's selfish on my part. Maybe I should try to get myself out of the way and say, well, I'll let them, uh, let them call anyway. But a guy like Philip Oldbridge is, um, is such a, a total jerk, such a complete fraud. Uh, not just that he's an anti-Semite, which of course he is. He's one of the worst anti-Semites I've ever talked to. Uh, but th that he's he's just totally obnoxious. So uh, I don't think he'll ever he'll ever get off the persona non grata list. Well, maybe not. You know, uh, I've been listening since the mid '80s, and I, there were a couple of guys who were just at least one who was just the opposite of persona non grata. Did you ever hear from Warren from Bed Stuy? He had some interesting... Well, Warren from bed was one of the great callers, but I do believe he moved. Oh, that's too bad. I do believe he moved. Uh, there was Warren from bed and then there was the fake Warren from yeah, bed remember, remember that? that? Yep. And uh, the uh, fake Warren from bed revealed himself. He was a young man, nice young guy, but... Uh, he had come to, uh, to Israel with me. I took a group to Israel in 1988, 40th anniversary of, uh, of that nation, if you remember. And uh, when we were at the hotel in Jerusalem having the farewell party, uh, this fellow, what was his name, uh, that fellow from, uh, who, did, uh, who revealed himself as the fake Warner bed -Stuy. Remember, he had a brother. He was at Amato's restaurant with him. Anyway. Uh, he got up there and he revealed himself as the fake Warren. But the real Warren, I don't know what happened to him. There was a guy named Sin Q also who was entertaining. Oh, yeah, Sin Q, that's right. Yeah. Well, I tell you, this is a real gallery here. And this, the fellow who calls Tom from the Bronx, you know, Tom. Did, well, did, hello, he, boy, did, is Tom. did he used to call and give a little Bronx cheer and say, Bob, is that the same guy that when I first started listening, there was a guy who said, Hi, Bob, it's Tom Nelson, and we'll go or something like that and hang up. Could very well be. Yeah, Mike, I appreciate your call, and I thank you very much. Have a nice weekend, Bob. As nice. Mike of Fort Lee, who probably will never make the persona non grata list. But you never know, do you? This afternoon, I'd like to congratulate Kenneth Fortune. I hope I'm pronouncing it correctly. He's sheriff of Jefferson County in Florida. And when confronted by allegations of uh, some people like uh, Mr. Pohl, the president of the NAACP of Florida, who were saying that uh, uh, he, in his handling of his questioning of suspects based upon a description given by the woman who was wounded as uh, her companion from uh, Germany was gunned down in Florida, uh, he was merely questioning uh, young black uh, kids in that town uh, there were charges of, uh, of him conducting a racist, uh, uh, uh... Of course, of course. The guy said it's just like the Gestapo tactics. Right. Uh, you know, when in doubt, uh, call something uh, Gestapo tactics. Exactly, Bob. And his, his response to that was that if, if anyone is truly saying that, uh, his response to the reporters was that if anyone is truly saying that, then they are in possession of, of the same mindset that, the, that is the cause of what's happening here today in Florida. And I just thought that that response was refreshing, and I thought it was great. Uh, yeah, you're talking about uh, Ken Fortune, who is the uh, county sheriff for Jefferson County. And uh, he said, hey, look, a lady who's a victim, who's lucky to be alive, told us we were looking for two black males. I think that's justification enough. He doesn't have to explain anything or justify anything. It's, a, it's justification enough. It, it just What are they going to do, round up? A bunch of white guys just for the sake of appearance? Exactly. Waste all that time? He didn't back down, Bob. No, and that's it. That's the lesson that we people have to learn. If you back down, you're finished. Exactly. Okay. Well, Bob, have a great weekend. Greg, you too. Thank you. I almost gave a Frank of Queens thank you. I think he has a uh, patent on that. Light. A few years back, he used to start your show off with a... Uh, very under, understandable song for a man in your position. Do you recall that? I Hate People? Yes. 
I'd like to hear that again. I think it would be appropriate for the type of uh, social situation we have today. All right, let's see if we can hear a few bars here. Uh, is this what you have reference to? I hate people. I hate people. I detest them. I deplore them. Is that what you had in mind? That's exactly what I had in mind. Yeah. That's great. I just um, make a comment about these uh, community service youth corps programs and yeah. mandated volunteerism. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I find it very ironic and oxymoronic, this terminology, mandatory volunteer. I mean, isn't this <laughs> contrary to the whole ethic of volunteerism? Of course it is, of course. They're giving a, uh, they, what they want to do is to, through the government, give a mercenary motive to volunteering. If a kid is going to do volunteering, it seems to me they should do it from the heart, not because they're going to get a tuition subsidy yep. or because they have to graduate to do it. Yep. Um, and just think of the poor people who have to be the guinea pigs for these kids' service. I mean, a lot of the kids will just do the minimum and in a slovenly kind of half-hearted way. They're doing it not because they want to, but because they have to. You know... Um, and I speak from experience because I uh, served on a board in the past administration for the federal government to make grants for community service programs. And I think it's important for people to recognize that all of these mandates originate somewhere with a bill in Congress or with the state legislature funneling millions of dollars in money to fund community service programs, yeah. so-called. Yeah. And um, uh, one of the things I noticed while serving on, these, on this board was that um, in large part, not entirely, but in large part the philosophy behind a lot of this community activism, when you really look at the actual programs, is, um, is to inculcate kids into uh, an activist mentality. A lot of them are very left-wing in orientation. Or oh, are they? Or, or else they just, you know, they're... they're you know, these social service programs that buy into the whole psychobabble thing yeah. and social therapy paradigm. Um, and they're just heavily into cheerleading and goody two-shoeism. And, uh, you know, I always, my attitude about this always was that this is something that people should do as a volunteer service uh, for themselves. And uh, government should not be in the business of mandating this stuff from the, from the federal and state level. I mean, it's just top-down indoctrination. So, um, well, you're absolutely right, Elliot. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Portia faces life. Yes, Portia. Hi. What I wanted to talk about. Wait a minute. Hold on. Hello. Your name is Portia? Yeah. And you're a male? No, I'm a lady with a deep voice. I want to congratulate you on having an abundance of testosterone, ma'am. Well, I don't have testosterone, but I do smoke cigarettes, and I was on the stage. And uh, if you shout from the stage long enough, you get a very large uh, lung. Do you know what I'm saying? It deepens the voice. Is that right? What? What? Uh, I'm like Tallulah Bankhead, and I don't think she well, had. Tallulah Bankhead had a whiskey voice. Well, Are you, have you been drinking cheap booze? No, I never drink at all. Well, see, you don't have a whiskey voice. Man. At any rate, uh, Portia. What? You, you didn't get it when I said Portia faces life, huh? I did, but you know, well, let's put it this way. I always ignore statements of that. I grew up in childhood and all through my younger years. Yes. And that's all I ever heard from people who met me. Portia faces life. Yeah, and you know, it, it, I suppose it gets to be <laughs> not annoying exactly, but you, you just get so used to it, you don't even hear it anymore. I'm sorry for being so banal <laughs> and a part of a, of a cliche. I, I truly am. But, you know, uh, you're old enough to have known the radio the show, Portia Face and Fly. Well, that was well, it. It was, a, it was a soap opera. Yeah. And uh, my mother told me all about it. <laughs> but, my, you see, the young kids of today have never heard of it. So of nobody... course not. They've never heard of a lot of really worthwhile things. But then, of course, uh, my first introduction to the name Portia was uh, from a Shakespeare play, remember? There's two of them. The Merchant of Venice. And uh, uh, Julius Caesar. Well, I wasn't thinking of Julius Caesar. I was thinking Merchant of Merchant of Venice, where she is the first lawyer. She was not a lawyer. Well, she... You know what she was? A judge advocate. Well, all right. You want to be technical about it. Okay. 
Well, the quality of mercy had church. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven. Okay, go ahead, please. Well, anyway, this thing of impressment, the American people have grossly forgotten their uh, true rights as American citizens. Now, the government may not impress into involuntary servitude anyone. So, you see this... Well, that's a violation of the 13th Amendment, yes. Well, you see, some fellow you talked with, I heard you say you didn't know about it, but you do know about it. Now, while in, for the public school, which is a charter school, chartered by the state of either, whatever state it is, they cannot tell the students that they must be volunteers because they are not volunteers. And there's a lot of more of that right in New York State here. Uh, well, what about Leona Helsley? Didn't they say, didn't the, the, the court tell her that she must perform involuntary servitude as a matter of getting out of jail? Community service? The courts may not enforce that sort of thing. This whole thing is getting away from everybody. Now, you take this Mike McAlary case. Uh, are you, you're a lawyer, aren't you? No. You, no, you never were? Well, when you study tort, uh, you find out that a contract is null and void the moment one party or another breaks it. Yeah, so now, if Mike, you, don't, you don't have to be an attorney to know that. This is another form of involuntary servitude because, unfortunately, the judge did not know his torts very well. And he, he puts out an order saying that Mike McAlary uh, has to go back, well, cannot, uh, he has to work for the Daily News. This is ridiculous. You cannot tell the man he has to work for the Daily News. If he wants to break his contact with the Daily News, all he has to do is say, I'm, not, I'm out of here, I'm not working here, goodbye. Yes, but on the other hand, let me tell you something. Uh, they, they cannot force you to work for them, but they can... Uh, enjoin you from working for someone else. That is not so. It is so. I ought to know. I've been living under that rubric uh, all my career, for heaven's sake. I, I, I signed a contract with WABC. That means that for the term of the contract, I give my services to them and not to another radio station, for heaven's sake. Yes, but under, they can't force under me to contract. They can't force me to come in, but they certainly can prevent me from working for a competitor. What are you trying to tell me here? Good heavens. Go back to your stage and your smoking and your shouting on the stage. Good heavens, I think Sam won't bother. But the deal with marrying the Jewish. I don't see any problem with it. Both Puerto Ricans and Jews are mongrels, racial hybrids, and there was no miscegenation that took place. There wasn't even a pure seat to be defiled. So I beg your pardon. I beg your pardon. Beg your pardon? You heard me. Uh, I don't really believe. I don't really believe what you're saying. Why not? History proves it out to be true. You know what, John? Jews of a you, you are a total scumbag. A real scumbag. Thanks, oh, Bob. Before I get to President Clinton, let me just say that when that gentleman's daughter doesn't pay any part of her health insurance, you and I do. Now, regarding President Clinton, I think he's becoming so great that he's even gotten the hardened Republican leaders coming up with reasonable pr pr proposals. And actually, I think President Clinton is becoming what we all hope Reagan would have been. A what do you smart? mean we all hope Reagan would have been? Well, Reagan, if you study the record by uh, people that have been in his administration about Reagan, they give him failing grades. Uh, Clinton seems who, to be... Who, who gave him failing grades who was in his uh, administration? Well, let me, for example, Martin Anderson, his economic advisor in his book Revolution, it turns out... How long was Martin Anderson his economic advisor? Uh, it must have been uh, three or four years. Was he really that long? No, he wasn't that long. First of all, it wasn't Martin Al uh, Al uh, Anderson who was his economic advisor. Uh, there was a fellow by the name of Martin Feldstein who was his economic advisor. You don't even know what you're talking sure about. Sure I do, Bob. And besides, Biff, you want to know something? You come to this uh, program, you come to this telephone call uh, as uh, highly suspect because you're not, uh, you're not an observer of the scene who's trying to be fair. Uh, you, you make it sound as though you were disappointed in Ronald Reagan. Quite the contrary. You were a big Jimmy Carter supporter. You supported him in 1980, and uh, you would support him even today. And, uh, Biff, you're a pain in the neck. Uh, uh, Light, you're on WABC. Hello. Hey, Mr. Grant, um, I got some soft criticism of the Italian-American community. Um, 
I'm not voting for Dinkins. I'm going to vote for Rudolph Giuliani. I want that to be known. But I have six or seven Italian friends on my job who all day long says, that black son of a gun, Dinkins, if that, and they don't use the word black, they use the N-word. They if, do? <laughs> yes, they do. And if, they, if he wasn't the mayor, the, if the city would be all right. I ask these Italian friends of mine, Employees of mine. Well, I you, don't know. I, how, you, how could you call them friends if they use that kind of language? Well, I'll I, I put it to you this way. I use bad language about Italian. I guess so. Well, you know, I, you know I, this is something I have absolutely no tolerance for. Well, they uh, do it all day, Mr. Grant. They do it all day. But well, I ask them, are they going to vote for Rudy? And none of them are even registered to vote. So that's the sad part. Now, you, you might be right on criticizing me for allowing them to use the N-word and me using bad words, about, but I can't stop them from using that. No, 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 no. The, the only, I'm not even criticizing you. I'm just, I'm just saying that I'm surprised that you would refer to them as friends if they uh, use that kind of language. Maybe I they're work maybe, with them, Mr. Grant. <laughs> you know I mean? Well, maybe they're just people you work with. Okay, employees of mine, you're correct. Uh, but, you, know, you know, co-workers. Co co-workers. You know, I think there's a big word. difference between a co-worker and a friend. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's a better word, a co-worker. But, Mr. Grant, none of them are registered to vote. Now, how are we going to defeat thinking? I think more Jews, I think more African Americans well, are voting for Rudy than Italians. Well, if these guys aren't registered, uh, you can tell them that they have until October 4th to be I registered. Oh, yeah, no, no, I'm sorry, too. I, it's an 8 number, 8 vote. I pinned it up on a bulletin board, yeah. and I asked them, hey, did you write get the number? No, I got the number. Well, I'm glad you, as you put it, axed them, and uh, they survived, I guess. Uh, I take Light's call with not a grain of salt, but... A whole shaker of salt. How convenient he's got friends who use that kind of language. I wouldn't for one minute believe Light. I wouldn't believe Light if he told me his real <laughs> name was Willie. Come on, Ron. Well, um, I just had, um, I was thinking about this today, and few, I was talking to a few um, white guys that I know about problems that were in the black community, and they asked me why I choose to segregate myself from white society. And I was telling them that... What do you mean to segregate yourself? Right? What, what do you well, mean Well, choose not to be a part, you know, not to hang out with white people, yeah. not to associate, basically. Well, why? I didn't know that there was a law that you were supposed to hang out <laughs> well, with no, white they, people. They I didn't know me, that. They asked me, well, Come on, this sounds stupid. You know, first of all, you're making all this up. No, no, Bob. Well, yeah, man, how stupid is it? Hey, hey, I could just hear you guys standing around. Hey, no, Ron, no, 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 how no. come you choose to segregate yourself? No, no, no. How come you don't hang out with white guys? Yeah, that's what they basically asked me. Ah, uh, Ron Goulart, you jerk, you scumbag. What a fake phony. I'm talking about David Dinkins. Uh, I truly want him to be the next mayor of New York City because in the past four years, He's been a credible mayor. I mean, we know what he's done in the four years. But what has Giuliani done in the four years? For well, York first City? of all, what have I done in the last four years? What have you done? We haven't been the mayor. You dumb... I, I'd love to really call this guy some names that would end it all. Would really end, end it all. Really end it. I despise these people. I despise them. How stupid. How stupid, how utterly stupid. Why do I have to deal with these dummies? Now, what's on your mind, Kevin? Well, I was listening to Senator D'Amato with great interest today, and uh, the great Senator D'Amato. I was wondering, it was a 97 nothing vote. I w I'm wondering whether that Carol Mosley Braun, the welfare chief from Illinois, I was wondering whether she was one of the three who were absent. Probably. She was probably out with some uh, stud. Because she's always so concerned about people's civil civil rights. I was wondering yeah. whether she made it a point to be yeah. there today. She's just a bum. That's what she is. Nothing but a bum. Yeah. Bob, one other point about the Jersey gubernatorial election. Yeah. Uh, you, I know you feel that Ed Rollins is tired and worn out. Oh, Ed uh, Rollins is a has-been. I'm wondering whether he might uh, have one good fight left in him because uh, Flory will beat her to the punch with all these TV commercials. And if she has a good October, I think she has a chance. But... Uh, I was really looking forward to her beating him to the punch, but uh, it seems he has. So he I'm wondering... should be way ahead of him by 20, 30 points, for heaven's sake. And I'm wondering whether Rollins might put in one good fight. Ah, oh, forget about it. Yeah. Forget about it, Rollins. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Bob. He's trimming his beard. That's that's his <laughs> biggest activity, trimming that dumb beard. Crying out loud.
think it wasn't out there stealing no money. It was white cops, white boys, the white races corrupt Grant. The white race, white people oh, like you. get off, you idiot. I don't know what the heck this guy's coming in here for. My shoes do not need a shining. What a scum. How stupid. Well, uh, the fact is that the chief architect of uh, the, the effort to uh, uh, put all of these uh, vitamin companies under very strict control is, uh, is, is uh, David Kessler, the chief of the uh, FDA, and he is a Bush appointee. Yeah, but uh, he may be a Bush appointee, but so is John Frohnmeyer a Bush appointee. Uh, that's no guarantee that the guy's going to be uh, uh, not out in left field. And uh, Kessler's out in left field as much as uh, Frohnmeyer was. Uh, Frohnmeyer uh, is, is a right winger. Uh, he was never oh, in left field. Frohnmeyer was no right winger. Oh, what come he, on. What are you talking about, oh. Frohnmeyer, right winger? You know, I don't mind people disagreeing, but please uh, be informed, will you, for heaven's sake? Ernie, you're a scumbag. Margaret, you're at WABC. <laughs> Hello. Bob, yes. I've been dying to talk to you. I would like to give my opinion of what I think of Mr. Clinton. Now, if I was talking to him, I would say, Mr. Clinton, what is wrong with you? You want us to think that you're, you are strong? You contradict everything you say, and you believe that everyone will see it your way. Stop, look, and listen. Can't you see you're taking away our liberty? All you right, talk thank about you. Lot, lot, you talk about, you thank talk you. about lots of shame. Well, thank you, thank you. I don't like conversations like that where somebody wrote something down and they they read it like, uh, uh, you remember elocution? Uh, I suppose everybody's like me, too young to remember the elocution days. They used to have elocution, and people would write, I stood there on a cliff overlooking the teeming sea. I watched the sun as it rose in the east, and then I watched it set in the west. I looked high into the sky, and I saw stars twinkling in the heavens. I mean, that's what she sounded like, for heaven's sake. Uh, and I don't care that she agreed with me. I mean, that's beside the point. I don't want to be annoyed. I didn't come in here to be annoyed. You know what I mean? And then... Yeah, but you know, I'm glad you're bringing this up, Charlie. About a year and a half or so ago, one of the... I, I think it was prime time, uh, did an expose on this company that uh, was supposed to take um, sludge... Right. ...and turn it into... Uh, uh, some of the uh, material to make uh, concrete. Mm -hmm. And it turned out to be a real lousy deal. And several cities, Minneapolis, including New York, yes. lost money on the deal. Yes. And it turned out that one of the guys who had stock in the company was none other than this this slime ball, Ron Brown. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And uh, no one knows for sure how much this will cost. Uh, Donna Shalala has um, been ordered by her boss, who happens to be Hillary, who was not elected by the people. I just wanted to point that out. <laughs> I'm sick and tired of this, uh, of this broad, of this smug, arrogant, imperious bitch parading around like she was elected. I'm just sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of all these senators, from both parties for that matter, with the exception of Congressman Dick Armey. Everybody seems to be kissing her royal tush. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is America. We don't have royalty. We don't have a king and queen. And yet, this broad's walking around like a queen. She is not elected to anything. She hasn't even been appointed to anything where she's had to have Senate confirmation. This is an outrage. And you know these... You're, you're absolutely right. I don't think there's a wrong... Is uh, the fact that uh, Peter Jennings uh, beats him week in, week out, week in, week out. That's number one. Another reason he spoke out is... He actually is ashamed of the fact that they saddled him uh, with this broad, who uh, really is uh, is as much a newscaster as David Dinkins is a mayor. Yeah. Uh, this Connie Chung, uh, she's uh, she's about as qualified to do news as uh, uh, well. You're probably more qualified, Peter. At any rate, he he, he is uh, it's a big big put down for him to uh, have. Uh, uh, Mr. Stringer over there, Howard Stringer over at uh, CBS, say, Dan, we're going to give you a broad to sit alongside of you, and the shtick is it's going to be 
an Asian broad. Mm. We got a real great stick here. And it's not just any Asian broad, it's Connie Chung. <laughs> well, I hope you guys are make, uh, making an impact. I think you are. Maybe it's getting to these newsmen. Making a, an impact on what? Well, they're not giving us the real news. They're giving us the media news. Yeah. Okay. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you. I just wanted to update you uh, as to the two bills that the woman from Long Island talked about yesterday. Yeah, I know, on the uh, prescription for vitamins and minerals, yeah. That's correct. Uh, Senator Hatch was interviewed on, the, on uh, uh, another program. The Bank Nobody Bank. knows about this except people who listen to the Bob Grant Show. I want you to know that. Right. Well, Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Well, I tell you, Hatch, Hatch said that he has 53 senators uh, supporting his bill. And Congressman Richardson from New Mexico has 100 members of the House supporting his bill. Well, I think very interesting that Senator Hatch said that, that I hadn't heard before was that during the campaign last year, Slick Willie wrote a letter to Congressman Richardson saying that he would support his bill. And ever since he's gotten elected, he hasn't said one word about it. Well, what Richardson... Pinpoint, point, every opportunity we get with factual material to show the American people what a fake, phony, fraud skunk they have in the White House. We've got to do that because maybe, just maybe, I doubt it, but maybe by 1996 the American people will come to their senses and uh, just as you erase a mistake with an eraser, <laughs> they will erase the mistake they made in 1992. Buck, uh, another thing that I found out is that uh, when it goes in the committee in the Senate, the committee is chaired by none other than... The swimmer. Yeah, the swimmer who uh, is not sympathetic to uh, uh, people who uh, who uh, run uh, vitamin stores, uh, health food stores, I should say. Not sympathetic to them at all. That's right. With his lifestyle, I can see why. Well, if they sold booze in the other uh, section, <laughs> maybe he'd like, okay, thank you. That one up yourself. Well, but anyway, nothing, this uh, is... wait, wait a minute. I, I'm not going to sit around and waste any time figuring out what you just said. There's nothing to figure out. All right. Me. Okay. Okay. Uh, but the thing, another thing that I wanted to ask you was, if about the national health, I would think that this is my one man's opinion. If they would put on the ballot in Canada whether the Canadian people would like to continue with national health or they would like to do away with it, I would like to see that on the ballot. That would be about the most honest way that no one can get their hands in it and screw it up or give a false story about it, if the people could vote on it, and then maybe we'd get a good view of whether the people in Canada want or don't want national health. What do you think about that, Bob? I don't think it has anything to do with us. Well, it's got... It no, something. I don't think it has anything to do with us. I don't think we should predicate anything we do in this country on the basis of how they would vote in another country. And it, you don't think it has anything to do with it? I, I do I, not I, think we should predicate our policy based on a referendum in another country. That's well, we're, right. not, we're not going to uh, vote on whether or not we're going well, to vote on what Canadian I, you, people. You, no, no you, I understand what you're saying, but okay. I understand where you're coming from. All right, thank I you, Tony. Completely. I'm glad you do. Thank, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, anybody ever uh, want to know, what is a Gabon? Now you know. You're on no, WABC. Hello. Yeah, it's me, the king of the Gabon. No, I wasn't thinking about you, Joe. Okay. Although you might be a prince. <laughs> you know, Frank from Queens recently called up, and he said, Neapolitan, Neapolitan, Neapolitan. And I say, Picayune, Picayune, Picayune. Because that's what we have today. Picayune this, fascism, racism. The liberals are just born again Picayune. Now, I don't know if you know that there was a, a fellow by the name of Harold Moskowitz. Now, he's, he's a, re, a revered, a revered, a revered uh, individual, a member of the Jewish community. No kidding. Yes. And you mean back, a guy by the name of Moskowitz and he's actually Jewish? My gosh. Yes. Now, back in 1950, and he also happens to be a survivor of the Holocaust, back in 1950, he invented the yarmulke. Now, he's also invented many other things but he's mostly known for the yarmulke. Now, of recent date, they have found out that 20 years later, a lot of Jewish people were coming down with brain cancer. Yeah. You know what, Joe? And they blamed you're, it you're, on you're the... Real, you're a real sickie. You're a real sickie. 
real sick all of I mean, why do I have to be, why do I have to be, why do I have to be uh, bothered with these uh, wackos? Hey, Manelli, give me that. John, come on in here. I want to take a look at that contract. See if it says I have to put up with with uh, vermin, will you? Oh, yeah, there it is, paragraph 24A. From time to time, vermin will call your program. Uh, to a limited extent, you will have to put up with them. Oh, to a limited extent. Okay. What's on your mind, Benito? Are you there? <coughs> oh, he's not there. Charles, anybody Hi. that calls claiming his name is Benito is a fake, phony fraud. Political public relations point of view, and specifically something I heard someone say the other day, which is that uh, if this is the greatest country on earth, why can't it provide health care? And I got so steamed up listening to that argument that I realized that this argument of the greatness of the country is only invoked by people who never otherwise refer to it and only as an excuse to reach into other people's pockets. Um, it also got me to thinking about uh, uh, Clinton's phrase, the courage to change. We can do this and we can do anything we want to if we have the courage to change. And right. what a bunch of political swap this is. Yeah. Um, from the point of view of a small business, Apparently, this courage to change means the courage to hire fewer workers, the courage to accept higher costs, uh, mandates that we don't want, and reduce choice and benefits for each dollar we put out. And finally, in some uh, level of something we're supposed to be grateful for, apparently, to pretend that the tax subsidies uh, have some value to a growing business that's creating jobs but doesn't have earnings. That kind of tax subsidy is useless and valueless and doesn't pay for a darn thing. Um, if that's courage, I am reminded of the old slogan that if you're getting raped, you might as well uh, lay back and enjoy it. And I wish someone would make that analogy to uh, uh, the president's wife who's at these uh, supercilious hearings. From the point of view of the individual, the courage to change apparently means either if you're working or if you're not working but don't have these benefits, the courage to accept an unearned benefit uh, and avoid having to set the priorities that the businesses who pay for it have to uh, set in order to earn the income and manage the outlays and costs to pay for this thing. That's, that's the courage to change, to accept an unearned benefit. This is nonsense. It's not just the usual level of nonsense. It's an Orwellian level of nonsense. And uh, it's clearly something that is uh, far greater than our ability c to control so long as the volition of the American people remains such poor self-esteem and uh, down in itself and convinced that it can't do anything for itself. Uh, doctor, the physician that was on made me almost uh, nauseous. You know, uh, uh, whining about how overworked and underpaid and disadvantaged he, he is. He didn't say he was underpaid. No, no. Hey, he didn't say he was underpaid. As a matter of fact, quite the contrary. He said yes. He said, uh, we do well. Yeah, I, I'm doing well. No, he, he didn't say he was underpaid. Sure, most of the time a person goes to the doctor. The doctor can't figure out what's wrong with him. The doctor gives him a prescription. The pre prescription doesn't help. The guy, the, the person who pays, pays a, a tremendous amount of money for the service, and the service does no good whatsoever. So the doctor sends him... Well, I take, I take it then you don't have this problem because I take it by the way you're speaking, you don't go to doctors. I, you know, I, I go to them, but every Really? Time, if, they, if they're such bums, why do you bother going to them? Oh, they're just like cops. Do you know, they're, 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 you know, they're, you know, they do no good. They're just nothing. They just make money, that's all. Hey, guess what, Joe? You'll what? never have to worry about making money, because with your pea brain, who's going to pay you to do anything? Well... Okay, Joe? Yeah. Have a lousy weekend, will you? You too, Bob. That's for when, a few years, Bob, I hear the salute to Mario, but I've never heard a translation from it. Really? Well, then you haven't really been listening to the program very much. Well, I listen to it when I'm in the car, but I've never heard yeah. the translate. Could you translate it for No, me? I'm sick and tired of translating it. What? I'm tired of translating it, Paul. Tired of translating it. I, I feel like I'm at an opera without a program. Oh, too bad, Paul. Too bad. <laughs>